Trey Parker and Matt Stone gave us an early Christmas gift this year with their latest special, South Park Not Suitable for Children, a scathing indictment of OnlyFans, the influencer economy, and South Park itself. We're going to break it down, but first, a quick recap. The newest craze to hit South Park Elementary is the status symbol Cred, a sports drink endorsed by influencer Logan LaDouche, a play on Logan Paul's prime drink. All the kids proudly flex their cred, except Clyde, whose dad and stepmom forbid him from consuming the sugar-laden beverage, making him the odd kid out. Meanwhile, the parents are outraged to discover that the school's art teacher is making an extra 10k a week selling nudes on OnlyFans. How can people be so irresponsible as to push adult content on the internet when they know children will see it? In an attempt to supplement his income, Randy starts making revealing OnlyFans content, much to Sharon's dismay. The only way to make him stop is if Sharon one-ups him with an OnlyFans account of her own, which takes off. Tired of feeling socially ostracized, Clyde turns to Nathan to get some fake black market cred. But when the other kids find out it's just apple juice in a cred bottle, Clyde, along with Cartman's affinity group of cred drinking elite, are labeled posers. Cred affinity group uses fake cred! Randy seeks advice from OnlyFans customer service on how to overtake his wife's exploding popularity. The representative suggests he associate his content with trending topics in order to increase discoverability. So Randy adorns his videos with the hottest thing right now, cred hydration drink. The views go up, but problem is, they're from children. Clyde hatches a plan to reclaim their reputation by getting their hands on a limited edition cred at a special event outside of town, but when they arrive, they're met by a frenzied horde of children ready to die to get their hands on it. The riot ends with the boys empty-handed. Sensing that there may be something more to the cred fad than meets the eye, Clyde proposes the boys seek out LaDouche and investigate who's really pulling the strings. Randy meets with an influencer agent who suggests he pair up with a sponsor so he can get some cash and and benefit from an algorithm bump. Randy is then auctioned off, bidders competing to use him as a mouthpiece for their agenda, whether it be the Chinese government, Big Pharma, Mattel Toys, or the war effort in Ukraine. The FBI raids the auction and arrests Randy, claiming that the inclusion of cred into his videos has caused minors to start making their own adult content, likely a play on Oliver Anthony's Rich Men North of Richmond lyrics. Look out for minors, not just minors on an island. The boys find LaDouche and just just as he's about to reveal the shadowy authority behind the plan to influence children, he's assassinated. The incident is quickly covered up, with the gunman assuring everyone that tech company data suggesting that children aren't being targeted ought to be uncritically accepted. In a surprising twist, it's revealed that Clyde's stepmother had orchestrated LaDouche's promotion of cred to start a dialogue with her stepson. The episode ends with South Park returning to its usual rhythm. The boys reclaim their popularity by showing off their new flavor of cred, and Clyde, despite his disillusionment with the cynical enterprise, takes a big ol' swig and pretends to like it. It tastes amazing. The end. The criticism at the heart of the episode isn't only one level that Logan Paul only fans and the influencer economy, but also at South Park itself. Prime, OnlyFans content, and the entire data mining big tech marketing operation claims to not target children, but it's an open secret that children are the tastemakers, the most passionate consumers, and the cohort that is most likely to stay loyal to your brand if you get them early. The show calls itself out in parts like when Randy says, Kids aren't gonna see this. And the shot lingers for just a bit too long, hinting that South Park is just as willfully oblivious about its appeal to children as the other culprits. As one of the pioneers of popular adult animation, South Park gained prominence in the late 90s by occupying the form of a children's cartoon. With its colorful 2D world, charming minimalistic construction paper characters, child protagonists, and subverting it by filling it with, in the words of Sheila Broflovsky, foul language and toilet humor. Nothing but foul language and toilet humor! In the South Park movie, wherein Terrence and Phillips stand in for South Park the show, Mrs. Broflovsky even directly makes this criticism that even though it's made for adults, kids are gonna see it. And it's not intended for children. Ah, but of course children are gonna see it! Can I finish? I remember being a third grader absolutely mesmerized by the vivid cartoon world of South Park that looked so similar to other cartoons I enjoyed, only to have my fragile little mind warped by the depression.
depravity of Trey and Matt's vision. Sorry, I can't help myself. That movie has warped my fragile little mind. South Park generated insane hype from children like myself. Advertisers flocked to Comedy Central, and Matt and Trey got rich, giving them a direct gateway to the most impressionable and most vulnerable demographic. In the late 90s, South Park sold an N64 game, a PS1 game, plushies, kid-sized t-shirts, plastic figurines. It wasn't exactly subtle that the show was adult content for children. But aside from merchandising, entire episodes were very clearly aimed at kids. Not unlike Randy pouring the outrageously popular cred sports drink all up on his daddy parts in a desperate grab for relevance, South Park made episodes like Chin Pokemon. Oh, such a nice big bean is American. In which they piggybacked off the cred craze of the time, Pokemon. The entire premise of the episode is that Pokemon or Chin Pokemon is a foreign language to adults. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. A phenomenon that uniquely appeals to children. It logically follows that episodes like this would carry with it a similar appeal. The same could be said for World of Warcraft, Guitar Hero, Lord, PewDiePie, or any of the other cultural phenomena South Park comment on that enable an almost 27-year-old show to constantly remain relevant with younger generations. Even this episode features a jab at Logan Paul and Prime, which will undoubtedly draw attention from Paul's community of young fans. Just as tech companies are able to get away with this hidden campaign on children by claiming that they're only collecting data on adults, even though everybody knows children use devices owned by their parents, South Park includes a famous disclaimer at the beginning of every episode claiming that the show they're about to see is not suitable for anyone, itself a functional admission that disclaimers prescribing an intended audience for content are pointless. In this episode, they go even further with a disclaimer that specifically asserts that the episode is not suitable for children, a claim that is about as sincere as the one that Randy's OnlyFans exhibitionism is of a, quote, extremely erotic nature. This is why, at the end of the episode, Clyde takes that long, painful swig of cred. It's the Kool-Aid we all have to drink, the shit sandwich we all have to eat. Influencers, showrunners like Matt and Trey, tech platforms, all have to play the game. We're all participating in an attention economy where wars are being fought to consolidate the loyalties and consumption habits of the most bankable and most vulnerable demographic, children. We're all entertainers, and we're all guilty of playing the cynical game of piggybacking off popular trends and allowing our voice to promote interests outside of our own. Oftentimes, when people passionately criticize or humiliate themselves, it's because they think that doing so will exonerate them. But something that I admire about modern South Park is that Matt and Trey aren't trying to exempt themselves from the criticisms they dish out. They're not claiming to be more authentic than those other people trying to hustle you. If anything, the point point is that the quest for authenticity in the advertising-dominated media space is a futile one, as the entire system lives and dies on its ability to influence people to consume the right product or support the right cause. The algorithms will dictate what content is seen, and what optimizes return on investment for advertisers and special interests will dictate the algorithms. Also, what should we make of the ending, in which it's revealed that Clyde's stepmom is the one who paid LaDouche to promote cred and influence Clyde? Is the point that positing hidden Matrix-like controlling authorities is silly, which I made a video about recently? Is it that parents are also complicit in the manipulation of children? Was it just a convenient resolution that nicely bookends the story? To be honest, I thought this was a strange revelation, one that seemingly upsets the critique of the other 90% of the episode. If I had to guess, I think this is a moment where the episode steps outside of its social critique and becomes a personal moment for Trey, as is increasingly common in modern South Park. Just as Clyde's mom uses Cred and Logan LaDouche to get the attention of her stepchild, I think this South Park special is Trey invoking Logan Paul and Prime to start a dialogue with his own stepchild about the influences impacting their life. Was making an episode of South Park about figures they cared about the only way to reach them? It's hard to say, this is kind of a wild guess, and I'm not particularly fond of trying to armchair psychoanalyze artists, but seeing as South Park is basically Trey's vlog in narrative form, 
I think the speculation is warranted. Overall, I thought this was the best South Park offering of the year. The show is at its best when it hits that sweet spot of insightful commentary with aggressively stupid jokes. Nothing pairs better with a hopeless condemnation of our cynical consumer society than a healthy serving of dick and balls jokes. When I heard they were making an episode about OnlyFans, I was expecting it would be full of moral claims about how it pressures women into sex work or promotes unhealthy digital relationships for men, but I was happy to see that they took a less obvious route and really widened out to the bigger picture. With Not Suitable for Children, Matt and Trey really nailed the 45-minute format and proved once again that even a decades-old show can still diagnose the cultural moment. Hey, appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to check out my coffee page if you want to support the channel. If it interests you, monthly donations are now possible. Also, hit me up on Twitch. Subscribe to the channel for more content. All those links are below, and I'll see you all in 2024. Thanks again, y'all. Peace.